Hello everyone, good day. I am Mr. Mark Anthony A. Delumpines, your instructor for this course, Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. In today's lecture class, I will be discussing to you the topic, Why Become a Philosopher on Attaining a Comprehensive Outlook in Life. One of the key elements in many educational reforms is diversity. Difference and choice or other proposals that establish separate curricular routes for different groups or individuals. This is according to Castells et al. 1999. What is diversity and why is it emphasized in our educational reform today or in, uh, specifically in our K-12 curriculum? When we say diversity, it talks about the difference that makes each person unique, diba? Right? It talks about uh, our differences, what makes us unique with other individuals. So, for example, ethnicity and culture, family life, beliefs, geography, experiences, and religion. So, in short, uh, we are different. So, we are diverse, diba? Right? Um, each person is unique to another, diba? Right? Uh, we differ as to our ethnicity, our culture, we differ as to our family life, origin, we differ as to beliefs, our experiences, and our religions, even geography. Sometimes, because of this diversity, we have difficulty in accepting others because they are different from us, right? So, um, it would be very difficult for us to accept others because of cer certain differences, such behavior may cause us to limit a person's opportunities or can make the person feel rejected or resentful. Thus, educational challenge in the 21st century entails appropriate acceptance of cultural and racial multiplicity. One does not engage in harassment of any form. This is another uh, one purpose of e emphasizing diversity in the K-12 curriculum. That um, it is a challenge in today's century to all educators to, incul uh, to, to emphasize the acceptance of diversity um, to, to its students. Right? Um, it is clearly emphasized that uh, we need to accept diversity because it is one way, uh, if we accept diversity, if we accept differences, it's one way of promoting unity and understanding. Okay, our topic today has something to do with diversity, differences, because we will be comparing um, the viewpoints, the, 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 the different viewpoints of Western, the, Western philosophy and Eastern philosophy. This section introduces the various viewpoints of philosophy, Western and non-Western. When I say non-Western, I am referring to the East or the Asia, the Asian philosophy. Also, we will dig deeper as to the Filipino indigenous beliefs. We will go beyond the logical and technological imperatives of existence. So at this, Sean, at this point, we will be expanding our philosophical frames by comparing Western and then Western traditions. <clears throat> Many philosophers hold that there are three original centers of philosophy in the world. So... Um, these are Greece, India, and China. So that is according to many, diba? many philosophers. They, they agree that there are three original centers of philosophy. So, so West, I am referring to Greece. For East, India, and China. All three arose as critical reflections on their own cultural traditions. So these three original centers of philosophy arises um, as product of its critical reflections on its cultural traditions or cultural origin. So, when we say Western philosophy, it has something to do with its own cultural tradition. When we say Eastern philosophy, it has something to do with its own um, cultural origin or tradition. Class, historically speaking, Asian classics of Indians and Chinese predate the oldest of Western classics. So, Roto, historically speaking, if we are going to trace history, Asian classics of Indians and Chinese um, existed first, diba? It, it predate the oldest of Western classics. That means, 
Indian and Chinese philosophers of note also live earlier than their Greek counterparts, according to Quito 1991. We say Indian philosophers, so we have, for example, we have Swami Vivekananda, we have um, uh, Prince Gautama, or what is uh, Siddhartha Gautama, or uh, in short, what we call Buddha. And then for Chinese Confucius, for example, um, they are some example of Asian philosophers who live earlier than their Greek counterparts. During the first centuries, there was more philosophical activity in the East than in the West. Diba? In the very beginning, in the first centuries, there was more activities or philosophical activities in the East or here in Asia compared to, as compared to, or compared in the West. Greeks before Thales did not have philosophy. So, so si Thales ang, ang of note ng uh, usa sa pinakauna nga philosopher sa Greece, di ba? But Greeks before Thales did not have philosophy. That means um, philosophical activities are more um, uh, was more um, uh, it can tra- can be traced, di ba? Uh, there are there was more activities philosophical activities in the East compared to the West. Okay, from the time of Greek triumvirate, there was a reversal. So, sa to, in the in the first centuries, there was more um, there was more philosophical activity in the East than in the West. Greeks before Thales did not have philosophy, but from the time of the Greek triumvirate, there was a reversal. So, sa time na sa Greek triumvirate, nagreverse, de ba? The trend change. There was a reversal. From the time of Greek triumvirate, for exa- such as Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, um, philosophical activity um, became um, uh, noticeable in the West. The Western thinkers started to indulge in feverish philosophical speculation, whereas the Asian thinkers began diminishing philosophical activity. So, sa time sa Greek triumvirate, nabago, di ba? The trend changed. There was a reversal. There was more philosophical activity in the West compared to the, to the East or Asian thinkers began to diminish philosophical activity. And in our present century, di ba? In our present century today, almost all major philosophical acti- activities or ideas emanate from the Western thinkers. In, in fact, if we are going to talk about philosophy, then one thing or individuals nga ma-associate na to is mahisigutin ta ni Aristotle, mahisigutin ta ni Plato, mahisigutin ta ni Socrates. Because during their time, nagkadaghan na ang philosophical activities in the West. Certainly, the culture of the East is very different from that of the West, right? We, we belong he, in, in the East, di ba? We are in the eastern part of the world, diba? Uh, specifically Southeast Asia. And then our culture is very different from that of the West. For example, Europe and North America. But that does not mean each culture is incapable of understanding certain features of the other. We are capable of understanding the differences. Now, as the world becomes smaller, it is increasingly important to develop an understanding of culture center, cultural centers around the globe that are very different from our own, diba? <clears throat> Why is it the author um, emphasized the world becomes smaller? Do you agree with this? As the world becomes smaller, do you agree that the world becomes smaller today? Yes. The world becomes smaller because of certain technological inventions, technological innovations that we have, diba? Because of technology, um, the world becomes flat, diba? I mean, um, we can easily communicate with other people anywhere in the world. We can we can travel, diba? We can travel through um, uh, modern modern um, <coughs> transportation vehicles easily and fastly. And then uh, we can we can talk, we can communicate through. Um, technology easily today. When the world becomes smaller and the world becomes flat. Now, and then as the world becomes smaller class, 
it is very important that we have to develop an understanding of cultural centers around the globe that are different from our own. Each society or culture has its own ideas of, it, of itself, a definition of what is important in life, and its own notions of what the world is like in general terms. Thus, each society or culture can be said to have its own philosophy. Kita even ta sa Philippines, we have our own Filipino philosophy. For Quito, there are three attitu- attitudinal imperatives that we must bear in mind if we are to appreciate either the Oriental or Eastern thought uh, vis-a-vis the Occidental or Western mindset and to situate them in their proper perspective. So if we are going to compare um, Oriental philosophy or Eastern philosophy and then uh, Occidental or Western philosophy, um, we have to consider three by um, attitudinal imperatives um, provided by Quito diba, in his study. Okay, first, so if um, first difference of Oriental and Occidental philosophy. Okay, in contrast to the propensity of the West to think in a linear manner that is in terms of beginning and ending in a straight line, Oriental thought runs in a circular way, the end conjoins the beginning in a cycle style. In a manner of speaking, nothing begins absolutely or ends absolutely. The first imperative talks about um, the, the different perspective of West and East as to how it look at life. Diba? In the West class, they look at life in a linear manner, straight line. That is, there is a beginning and there is an ending. That is for Western philosophy, diba? Um, life begins diba, at the time you are born and life ends at the time you are, um, uh, you die, diba? At the time that um, um, you face death. That is for Western philosophy. Life is a linear manner. That is, there is a beginning and there is an ending in a straight line. However, class, the opposite, diba? Oriental or Eastern philosophy um, believe that life is a circular way. Circular, diba? Ang West, linear. There is a beginning, there is an ending. Life begins at birth and life ends at death. However, class, in Oriental philosophy, especially in Hinduism, diba? Or in India, they believe that life is a circular way. The end conjoins the beginning. Diba? Life is a cycle, diba? cyclic style. In a manner of speaking, nothing begins absolutely or ends absolutely. There is no exact beginning and there is no exact ending. That is for Oriental philosophy. Further, okay, further, for you to understand further, Oriental philosophy believe that a man may have been born at a precise time and may have died at a precise time. Yes, Oriental believe that man can be born at a certain precise time and it can die also in a certain precise time. But it cannot be said that his existence can be congealed at a specific time and when he dies. His life continues in another form. This is indispensable to the understanding of samsara or rebirth. That means, Oriental philosophy believe in samsara or rebirth. There is a cycle of rebirths within the various spheres of life, the vegetative, animal, and human. The world, in fact, did not have an absolute beginning, but, what, but was merely a continuation of an earlier world in an earlier time. There is, therefore, succession of worlds and succession of lives. Diba? If we talk about Indian philosophy, they believe that life is a cycle. Diba? Life will be a series of rebirth. Or it can be understand it can it can be understood in the in, in the in um as samsara or rebirth. There is cycle of rebirth. Diba? And then in Indian philosophy class um, <clears throat> the goal is the goal of India. The, the goal of Hindu is to, um, for them to attain enlightenment, uh, their soul must be one 
with Brahman's soul, right? the Creator. But if um, if their spirit is um, said to be um, not ready to uh, to face in light or to to achieve enlightenment, so a certain certain spirit will undergo series of rebirth, right? It can be um, um, mabuhi siya in another form, in in a, in a vegetative form, in an animal form, di ba? That is the the idea, uh, the philosophy of India, di ba? Especially, generally in the East, there is therefore succession of worlds and succession of lives. Is that clear? That is the first one, first difference. Western, the West believe that life is a straight line. There is a beginning, there is an ending. However, in the west, in the east rather, life is a circular manner. It has no absolute beginning and absolute ending, diba? And then they believe in 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 they believe in the cycle of rebirth within the various spheres of life. Okay, second imperative is all about the assumption that the East does not make rigorous dis- distinction between religion and philosophy. Basic philosophical concepts are shrouded in religious beliefs and myths. However, it is false conclusion that Eastern philosophies such as Chinese and Indian are not sufficiently philosophical to be considered philosophy, but are more properly called religion or mythology. In the East, Philosophy is religion, and religion is philosophy. The Oriental does not cut off philosophy that is thought from religion that is life in action. Okay, the second imperative talks about um, the difference of the East and West as to how they distinguish religion and philosophy. It is very clear that in the East, they does not make any rigorous distinction between religion and philosophy. And in the West, of course, as opposite, there is really distinction between religion and philosophy. In the West, religion is religion, and philosophy is different. But in the East, in the East, um, Eastern philosophy believe that philosophy is religion, and religion is philosophy. The Oriental does not cut off philosophy that is taught from religion that is life in action. Pag, pag mahisigot ang Eastern philosophy, uh, we always associate it with um, re- uh, religion, di ba? Mayin taog, Hindu philosophy. When we talk about Hindu philosophy, um, we often associate with Hinduism, di ba? The religion of Hindus. If we talk about Buddhist philosophy, we will talk about Buddhism, diba? Talking about its religion. Okay, Christian philosophy, for example, diba? We talk about Christianity. That is in, that is in the, that is in the East, diba? Oriental. Philosophy is religion and religion is philosophy. That is for um, the second imperative. The second imperative um, emphasize that in the West, there is really distinction between religion and philosophy. And in the East, there is no distinction. Philosophy is religion and religion is philosophy. Also, also, life for Oriental thinkers is a translation of thought. It is philosophy in action. Orientals believe that life must be the extension of thought, its fruit and its application. For Quito 1991, it is not accurate to judge that Asia is poor because of religion. Rather, it is poor because it cannot accept the polarization or division of theory and practice of philosophy and religion, or of its way of thinking and its way of living. Quito suggested that only if Asia could find means of adjusting its vision by making religion and speculation go together, by reconciling elusive theory with practice, then Asia too could could become progressive like the West. Okay, that is one also one uh, point of view of Quito, wherein why is it that Asia 
is not that progressive compared to compared to the West. The West kasi, Western, Western countries really distinguish religion and philosophy. Para sa ilaha is, lahi si philosophy, lahi si religion. And then si West, si West kasi, they accept diba, the division of theory and practice. They accept the division of philosophy and religion. Um, they accept the way uh, the division between the way of thinking and then way of living. Kita kasi sa Asia, um, our beliefs really influence our uh, way of living. And then um, sometimes this belief hinders us to attain development. Okay, the third imperative is all about um, the third imperative is all about the acceptance of validity of intuition and mysticism, the readiness to revert to extra logical if not illogical modes of thinking. Well, this is in connection with a uh, second imperative. Orientals are perceived of transcending the limitations of human intellect and treating a uh, thread and um, Orientals are perceived of transcending the limitations of human intellect and treading, um, treading on a no man's land where verification of one's premise is not possible. Oriental thought does not follow structure mode, but its very nature, it cannot be intuitive and mystique. What do you mean by that? Um, as to the acceptance of the validity of intuition and mysticism, Orientals and Occidental uh, differs, diba? And then, um, okay, Western countries or Western philosophy really adheres to logical way of thinking. Diba? Um, they do not accept diba, the validity of intuition and mysticism. Kita, diri sa Asia, totoo kita, diba? If logic is not applicable, diba? We, we tend to accept intuition, instincts, and then we tend to associate it with myth, di ba? Mysticism. Dagan kita og tuo-tuo, tuo din ta, in ani-ani, pasig na ani. Ang, ang kalahian kasi sa Wests, di isla basta basta mo tuo. And they more adhere on logical thinking, di ba? Corrective thinking, correct reasoning. Kita, if logic is no longer able to solve a life problem, Asian mind resorts to intuitions. Diba? Okay, the West, but to, uh, but the West has but to theorize. So the West, before they believe, they are going to theorize, they are going to speculate. No application to life is necessary. For example, Platonic, diba? The idea of um, um, Plato's philosophy, Hegelian, Kantian, and Fiction theories to which the Western philosophers render lip service. Their application to practice is still being contested by other Western philosophers. So, in, in general class, West really adhere um, correct logic, diba? logical way of thinking, corrective thinking. And then, this la basta-basta mo adhere sa intuition and then mysticism. Kita, kita sa East, if logic is no longer applicable, we tend to accept the valid validity of intuition. And uh, we tend to accept the validity of mysticism. Tuo-tuo kay ta, di ba? Tuo-tuo kay ta. By its nature, um, we are intuitive, di ba? Oriental thought does not follow structure mode. But its very nature, it cannot be, it cannot but be intuitive and mystic. The West has, the West has but to theorize and speculate. The opposite is, kita, sa oriental dilita dilita dili din tamo speculate din din tamo theorize and we tend to accept intuition and mysticism okay that ends my lecture today uh, about the difference between oriental and occidental philosophy and for you to know more about um, the differences of um, west and east philosophy um, continue reading your module and then you can also browse in the internet god bless and um, have a blissful day ahead.